Happy Thursday, Facebook friends. Welcome back. It's Angie Garza, Director of Professional Learning and Educational Services at ROE 47, serving Lee, Ogle, and Whiteside counties. And if you're joining us back here on this fine Thursday on Facebook, that means it's time for another edition of our Teacher Talk. It is welcome to October in our educational world. And so we are going to start digging into uh, more topics related to teaching and learning. And so as always for these really engaging and very interesting conversations, I have with me this morning, my friend, colleague and co-host Ms. Stacy Dingus, our digital teaching and learning specialist. Good morning, Ms. Stacy. Angie, it's hard to believe that we're already at um, October. Um, I'm excited about our topic today. I love giving some useful information to our area educators, so I'm looking forward to it. And Stacy, this is a very, um, well, it's always timely and it's always very relevant, but as we work to transition ourselves back to some semblance of normalcy in our educational world, we know that for the last year and a half, we have been living um, in a in a technological world. Um, and so we've had lots of conversations with one another about how has the face of education changed uh, now that we've really had to fast track our conversations about technology and what are some of those things that our teachers are doing that are innovative or what are some of those challenges uh, that they're facing? And so uh, we have with us this morning, the person who's going to help us to answer those questions. So we would like to welcome to our teacher talk this morning, Mr. Ben Sondergroth. Mr. Ben Sondergroth is no stranger to our educational community. He does uh, many, uh, trainings and has been a real lifeline uh, to our teachers and administrators and even to uh, some of our parents and other stakeholders over the last two years, especially as we have worked our way through the pandemic. And Ben is uh, with the Illinois LTC. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means here in just a second. But good morning, Ben. Welcome. Hi, Angie. Hi, Stacy. Nice to be here. I see the, uh, these pop up on my Facebook feed every Thursday, so it's cool to be a part of one. Uh, I feel very honored uh, <laughs> to be to be the second Songroth featured on uh, on one of these uh, Teacher Talk Thursdays. So uh, I don't know that my announcement is much as major as what my dad's was, but uh, I'm happy to happy to be a part of this and uh, happy to share some hopeful knowledge for people. That's right. The The last Sandra Graf we had on Teacher Talk was celebrating uh, retirement. So I, I don't think you're I don't think you're quite there yet. I got another couple of decades uh, before I could come on here and who knows what platform we'd be in some sort of like augmented virtual reality doing these then or actually, you know, Angie, you'll be retired probably by then, too. So I'll just you'll be long since retired, I'm sure by the time I'm done with that. It's like, I'll, I don't know. Who knows what that's going to look like? What is the future of Teacher Talk Thursdays in 20 years when I'm ready to be gone? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you follow your dad, he's having he's enjoying retirement. That's for, for sure. sure. For so, sure. Well, we are going to pick your brain just a little bit this morning uh, on our Teacher Talk about technology, which I think you might know a little something about. All right. Well, earlier um, I, I shared with our Facebook friends this acronym LTC, Learning Technology Centers. Uh, for the state of Illinois. Um, and so I was hoping that as we kind of get started this morning, we hate to throw acronyms out and expect people to understand what those are. So can you tell us a little bit about the LTC and what it does and what your role is um, within that organization? For sure. So yeah, um, we have, I mean, the state of Illinois is filled with acronyms and we're no, we're no different as a, a state board of education program. So uh, we could get really acronym heavy here and say, I'm the lead RETC for the LTC, which is an ISB program. Um, and uh, see if I kind of condensed a lot of words into very few there. Um, but really what it is, so the Learning Technology Center of Illinois, what we are is we are a state board of education program. So we're funded through the state um, as a grant. And uh, that grant was awarded to ROE9 uh, down in Champaign, Ford County, and we run out of uh, ROE9. So, uh, that's technically our home base. Uh, I what we do is we support schools and districts uh, and actually now parents as well uh, throughout the entire state of Illinois and anything that has to do with educational technology. So whether that's professional development, which is kind of what, you know, the RETC is what I am, what our role has become uh, doing a lot of that, doing statewide events, conferences, things of all natures of professional learning, but also things like helping districts access funding. Um, 
navigating different technical issues, uh, supporting just really if it falls underneath of that technology umbrella, we're there to help. Um, and so it's a really cool thing. We've we've grown from when I started three years ago, actually this month was my, my first year with the LTC. September 17th was my three year anniversary. And uh, we've grown from six employees to 26 employees in that time frame, which is pretty cool. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, the pandemic definitely expedited our growth uh, as we became pretty pretty relevant pretty quickly for for a lot of folks, and which was uh, which was a lot of uh, work, but also really cool. Uh, we got to do a lot of really neat things. So, uh, so yeah, so that's what the LTC is. It, you know, we're we're here to to support in any any way, shape, or form uh, that we can. So, uh, and then my role specifically is as a regional ed tech coordinator, uh, which means that I have all of what is known as LTC North, um, basically LaSalle, Peru, kind of straight up the I-39 kind of corridor there, uh, and then uh, west, uh, all the way over to like Galena, East Dubuque, uh, and then down past Quad Cities. Uh, and so about 144 school districts that I can support in any way, shape, or form, uh, nine different ROEs. Uh, and yeah, just if there's an ed tech question, if I don't have the answer, I can help find it. So that's kind of my job. You had mentioned um, about how COVID has really kind of changed, um, you know, what we're doing with technology in the classroom. And as teachers are returning to in-person learning this year, um, can you talk a little bit about specific changes that you see from a technology perspective? Um, it, you know, we have talked many, many times from a teacher point of view here as to how teachers had to immediately change what they were doing in the classroom. What are some um, innovative tools or strategies that are being used um, across the state as we have kind of grown, I guess, um, with our technology usage because of COVID? Yeah, so so the pandemic, obviously bad uh, in a lot of ways, but I think also good, um, you know, with chaos causes innovation. And uh, we definitely were thrown into a state of chaos uh, in, in 2020. And what that did was what I think is neat is it gave everybody uh, if, you know, from a good, right, wrong, and different, whatever, force everybody to experience educational technology. Like you had to teach with technology in some capacity. Um, so what's neat is coming out of that is that we've got a lot of teachers that were always maybe a little bit hesitant to jump in, but now they have all baseline knowledge of how technology can impact student learning. Uh, so coming out of that now, it, it's really cool because there's less kind of hand-holding step-by-step, hey, this is what a Google Doc is, because pretty much now, like lots of, everybody knows what a Google Doc is. Hey, this is Google Classroom. And while they might not be able to utilize it to the fullest, they at least have used it, and then we can help refine their use. Um, so I think one of the biggest trends coming out is that it's just being used more. Um, you know, usage is just out there. People understand its impact. Uh, they see the benefits uh, to doing things. One of the things that's really neat, as you mentioned about like trends and stuff, I see a lot more assessments moving online, which is freeing up a lot of time to do other things in the classroom. You know, people switching from paper quizzes and tests to Google Forms. And just in that little shift, having something auto grade as opposed to having to sit there and grade a stack of 100 papers, you've now freed up a lot of time in your own life to do other things, freed up time in your classes world to do other things. But then there's also like the revolutionary ways that people are trying to find or trying to use the Google tools. So that's where my world kind of exists in is, is in the Google world. And, you know, we're seeing things like teachers push boundaries on, on how they're using Google Docs. So it's not just, hey, write this paper. It's, hey, let's create an entire interactive learning experience, uh, creating a hyperdoc inside of this. So we're putting links in and we're putting links to videos and websites and kids are curating all their information in there and they're collaborating. Um, you know, they're just creating this awesome little ecosystem, uh, you know, and then you have like transformative tools. Um, you know, uh, I think screencasting has just blown up as teachers were trying to figure out ways to disseminate information to their students that they otherwise wouldn't be able to. So now teachers have seen the power of like, hey, if I record myself and send that to my students, I'm able to then again free up more time and also there's no learn there's a, a less of a learning gap so like if Stacy's absent on Monday and she comes in on Tuesday hey what did I miss well you missed my lecture here's a bunch of reading I hope you can catch up instead it's hey here's the video of my lecture now let's actually get to work and you can actually watch what I was discussing in class so I think that's huge um you know, it's just a lot of that stuff where we're transitioning these things from paper based to digital based and you, you know, kids don't leave their homework in their locker anymore because their locker is the Internet. 
Um, you know, there's no scrambling to run back to find a textbook. I mean, maybe sometimes still, but like you can find the information on the internet now. Uh, and kids all have access to devices. You know, that's one of the things that also came up is that now almost all schools have given, have given access to kids uh, for devices. Um, you know, we saw statistics come out that like home internet access went up a ton too. So it's just things like that are just super imp impressive, super neat to see. Um, you know, if I could give a couple of tools out to teachers that maybe they want to explore that are kind of those transformational ones um, that maybe are outside of the Google world, you know, like I have those, but there's one Chrome extension that I'm just in love with. It's brand new, like last year. It's called Moat, M-O-T-E. You can find it at justmoat.com. Uh, what it does is it allows you to insert audio into comments inside of the Google tools um, and inside of Google Classroom. So while I said it wasn't a Google tool, it's, it's a third party tool. But what you can do is, for example, a teacher can read a, a Google Doc that a student submitted and instead of typing out a ton of feedback, they actually click this little purple M and they can record their feedback. So I can say, Angie, this was really good, but I really need you to find some more support for your argument in this particular paragraph. And instead of having to take the time to type all that out and have it be possibly misconstrued, because we all know text doesn't equate to what we're trying to say, a student can click on that, listen to that, say, oh, like she, you know, he wasn't being super critical of my page, my, my paragraph. He just wants me to go find some more support. Um, you know, and then in Google Classroom, you can actually use it to also add audio comments in there. So if you're giving feedback to kids there and you can add an audio comment. So, you know, I think that's one of the things, too, that's really neat is we're able to really meet kids uh, in a lot of different places now. So it doesn't always have to be text. It can be audio. It doesn't always have to be text. It can be video. It doesn't have to be audio. It can be video. You know, so lots of different things. So I think Moat's really cool. Um, another one just really quick uh, is uh, Cami. Uh, Cami is my, one of my favorites. Uh, it's a way you can take uh, uh, digital PDFs and have kids transform them into interactive learning experiences. So kids can add text to a PDF, they can type on it, they can draw on it, they can add audio, they can add video, they can insert YouTube videos onto it. Like it just takes this boring PDF that you didn't know how to maximize in an online world and transforms it into something new. So those are a couple of like really interesting ones that are just always on my radar. Um, Moat being the newest uh, tool that I've added to my toolbox here recently. So, so uh, Ben, I will freely admit to you, and you could probably attest to the sheer quantity of chart paper that we usually keep in the office that, you know, the last year and a half have really pushed me outside of my comfort yeah. zone and has probably saved a rainforest or two. So, right, right. Um, it's it's been really interesting to watch how quickly all of this has continued to evolve and uh, teachers kind of rethinking and reshaping the way they do business. Um, it really is, and like your point about the chart paper too, that actually spurs uh, just a kind of about so about your mom. So Gail actually came had me come down the other day. We were looking at something, and like instead of using what you know would have traditionally been like, hey, I'm going to put a bunch of these chart paper post-it notes up on the board. She was using a Google Jamboard. And people were commenting on the Jamboard and it was interactive and you can drag and drop them around. And it, you know, it's just neat to see like that too, right? We're taking these things that, yeah, we, and, and think of the cost expense too. Like you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on these giant chart boards. Like, no, let's just use a Jamboard, you know? And sometimes you still want the chart paper. You don't have to maybe buy 50 of them a year. You can buy 20 of them a year, you know? So yeah, it's cool. It's neat to see. Very true. My stock in 3M, however, has plummeted. So <laughs> I'll have to find I'll have to find a little something else to maybe invest in. So Alphabet. Alphabet. <laughs> alphabet got right. Google, Google's stock tickers alphabet. That's a good one to do if you got like okay. two thousand dollars for one share. But you know, oh. yeah, good one. Yikes. You go no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we talk a lot about the excitement behind the the tools and the strategies and the devices and the access, but um, you know, to quote a favorite movie of mine, with great power comes great responsibility, right? Indeed. So um, we have some new legislation. Well, it's not, not exactly new. It just, right. it's the effective date was July 1st of this year, um, which was, is very interesting how all that timing played out. But um, that, that of course is uh, SOPA, which is mm -hmm. not SOAP. Um, <laughs> No, it's not but, legislation around soap in schools, but uh, right, yeah. right. <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't know, you know, by now, some most of us have at least heard of it. So, you know, when we think about using these tech tools in our in our classrooms, what impact does SOPA have on that? What is that? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? 
Absolutely. Yeah. So SOPA is the Student Online Privacy Protection Act. Again, another acronym. Uh, and yeah, so it was actually enacted in, uh, in signed into law in 2019 with an effective date of July 1st, 2021. Uh, and, you know, something happened right in the middle of that time when they gave basically gave schools and districts two years to plan and to to get ready for this. And then COVID hit and uh, everybody basically forgot about it. And so then last spring or this spring, it was a mad rap, mad dash to try and bring everybody up to speed, try to get everybody as close to um, compliant as possible. Uh, and so what SOPA is, is it is a law that is actually a really good one because it does protect our students' privacy. So it's a data privacy protection act. Um, I can equate it to this, and this is something everybody has experience with. I just had it last night. I said, I'm out of Zyrtec, and we were going to the store. And we went to Aldi, which does not sell Zyrtec. And I went in and I actually bought the Aldi brand Zyrtec because I was that desperate. And uh, I'm hoping it works. So far, so good. But uh, anyways, I get home and I open up Facebook and literally the third targeted ad that I had was for Zyrtec. I didn't type it into anything. I mean, it's just they're listening. <laughs> like the, the, the phone is always on. You're never, you're never getting away from it. It also happens when you do a Google search. So if you type something into Google and you search for it, it pops up on your targeted ads on Instagram, your targeted ads on Facebook, your targeted ads on uh, for Amazon. You know, what what you recently browse for? It's like, oh, you might want this. You're like, yeah, I do want that. It's because you were just searching for it. Well, that's because what these tech companies do is they mine your data. Okay, so they take what you search for, they then sell it to marketers who then sell it to companies. And you all agree to that when you open up that little box, you see terms of service and you just like, yeah, whatever, take my firstborn, I don't care, just get me through this little box. Um, and that's how they get that information. So what SOPA is trying to do is protect our students from that happening to them. And so even though I use Google as an example, Google has, uh, they're almost ready to sign an agreement soon. But they have always done that with education accounts anyways. California actually sued them about five years ago because they thought they were mining data. Google proved that they're not mining student data. Um, so they're not taking it. But what we're worried about is other companies doing just that. You know, taking a kid's login information and their email and selling it to somebody else to then target them with emails. Um, and so what SOPA does is it creates an agreement between your school district and that operator, that, that app, that website, that program that collects student information. So whether that's a, they click a button that says log in with Google, or they have to type in their name into something, um, that's considered a, an operator under the, the law. Uh, and you have to have an agreement with that. So, so that's, it's, it's a good thing. We should be doing this. We should know where our kids' data is going. Uh, the thing for teachers that everybody in the teacher world has to be aware of is that we can't just now willy-nilly say, hey, Ben mentioned Moat. I'm going to now have all my kids create an account with Moat. Um, you can't do that anymore. You're, you have to approve it with your district. And your district should go out and look for an agreement that Moat has already signed. And then what's called piggyback off of that, which is a very technical SOPA thing that I won't get into. That's for the people that make, you know, the big bucks to figure that out. Or in some cases, it's the tech directors who don't make the big bucks, but they've been tasked with it. So um, essentially what you need to do is just communicate with your tech director, your superintendent, your principals, and say, hey, Ben Songroth mentioned Moat. I want to have my students use that and see if you have an agreement with them. Uh, and so it goes for everything. So it's it's just one extra layer of uh, both hindrance a little bit into the freedom to try new things with your kids, but also with the idea that we're protecting student data and it's it's actually a very good thing um, you know that we have to comply with. So so that's SOPA. That's kind of one of the the, the troubles I think. Uh, you know, just be be aware that it exists um, and, and just be in communication with your tech department on, on what's available there. As we wrap up this teacher talk, um, tons of great information. Can you um, share with us a little bit about some of the supports um, that that um, you have seen that teachers are looking for in regards to technology in their classroom? Maybe some of the supports that you can offer and then how um, our area educators can access those supports? Yeah, so uh, you could start with actually, depending on when this comes out, like tonight at 3.30, I'm doing one uh, with <laughs> with Harley 47 uh, on, a, we're calling it, hey, Google, what's new? Uh, just a little pun on, you know, yelling at your Google Home device. Um, 
to tell you what's what's new with Google. So Google launched a ton of new updates, and so we're going to go over them. So hopefully you'll join us for that. It's on the uh, the Click and Go page uh, for for tonight. Um, yeah, so we've got a couple of more sessions uh, as well through ROE 47 that you can sign up for. We're talking about decluttering your digital life, uh, doing some classroom communication and collaboration, creating a community in there using Google Classroom. Uh, so really fun sessions we've got kind of set up um, set up with, uh, with ROE 47 here locally. Uh, and then the other place I'll just point everybody to is the LTC's webpage, just ltcillinois.org. Um, we have so many different things going on. It's hard for me even to keep track. Uh, there's lots of virtual options available, um, you know, and you don't have to be in LTC North to join. If there's one that Holly Kelly's doing in LTC East, like you can jump into that. You know, if one that Joe Sipfel is doing down in LTC South, like, and it's virtual, like you can jump into that. Um, you know, we've got a lot of statewide stuff going on. I would also say if you're Trying to scratch that itch of going to a conference, we have IETC coming up in uh, in Springfield uh, at the middle of November. So it's the week before Thanksgiving. So it's the 18th and 19th um, down in Springfield at the Crown Plaza. So if you're interested about getting out and going to a conference and breakout rooms and talking to people in person, uh, that's a really cool event. It's going to be pretty big. Um, you know, we're hopeful to get a lot of cool, cool attendees to come and, and hang out with us. So, yeah, we've got so many different services uh, that we can help support with. People can always reach out directly to me. Um, you know, I can come and help in your district. I can support you virtually. We can consult on things if you're trying to implement something. Um, you know, and like I said earlier, if I don't know the answer, I, I hope to I will find the person that that does have uh, that answer for you, uh, if possible. So. Yeah, lots of good stuff going on. Ben, you also have some some networking sessions, I believe, ah, too, for some yes. for some tech folks. You want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, thanks for reminding me about those. Those are important. Uh, yeah, we, we're doing a monthly networking sessions uh, every month except November uh, because of IETC. It kind of falls right right in line there. Um, uh, trying to do either the third uh, third Friday or fourth Friday of the month, whatever it kind of fits. So it's just kind of one of the latter Fridays. Uh, of the month. They're going to be on uh, Krista's uh, schedule that she sends out to everybody. I actually added them all on there. I think I have to add all the ones for next, uh, for 2022. Um, but yeah, they're from one to three on Friday afternoon. Uh, we're going to make them hybrid as well. So if you want to come and hang out at the ROE, uh, you can, but if you want to join via Zoom, you can too. You just have to register with the link that's there because that's how you get the Zoom link uh, uh, to join. So um, yeah, they're fun. And we want to open them up to teachers, too. It's not just tech directors. Like, we want to have this conversation about educational technology, how it's impacting you, what's working, what's not working, challenges that you have. Um, it's pretty tech director heavy at the moment with the core group of six to eight that we have. Uh, but we want to expand that. Administrators, teachers, we want all sorts of viewpoints uh, to come join us for those. So, yeah, thank you for reminding me about those. We do have those set up through the rest of the year. So, like I said, every month, but uh, November. So. All right. Lots of great information shared with us this morning. Ben, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy technological schedule to join us on our teacher talk. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, it's exciting. I always like talking tech, so all good. Uh, and uh, you're pretty fluent and accustomed to uh, being on the screen at this point in, in the adventure, right? I, yeah, I'm used to staring at black, uh, usually black boxes. I appreciate you two keeping your cameras on for this so that way I can actually see a face and, and feel like I'm talking to somebody. Uh, but yeah, talking into a camera, who would have not known that I would grow to be so used to doing that? <laughs> but here we are. So, yeah. Absolutely. You know, one of the big takeaways as we talk for me this morning is just how much our world has changed in the last year and a half, not not just uh, with with some of the things that we are trying to navigate from an academic standpoint and from a from a social perspective, but just in the way that we we learn and the way we interact with others using technology as that vehicle, um, certainly looking a lot different now than what it did uh, pre pandemic. So definitely. Definitely. Yes. I think it also speaks to educating and using technology with your students because we've all been thrust into this world that maybe even we didn't see like and now like just preparing your kids to be ready for the future that is this like this isn't going away. You know, I joked earlier about what form will it be? Well, it'll still be in some form. 
Um, and so if we can bring more technology into our classrooms to just kids, you know, Google might not be here in 10 years, we don't know, uh, but something will. And so if they can navigate that space, they'll be able to better adapt and navigate that. I grew up in Microsoft Word. I was very easily transitioned into the Google world, you know, because I had those same skills. They just look a little bit different. So, you know, like that's just another like your point there, Angie, like of, you know, that's a good way to prep our kids for what's to come because it's only going to get more involved with technology. Absolutely. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Teacher Talk. We hope you've enjoyed all of the wonderful information that's been shared. And I will leave you with one final challenge. How has your world changed as a result of the pandemic and how you're engaging students in your classroom with technology? Um, I think if we take a minute to stop and reflect on that, we can uh, very purposefully move forward with continuing to engage and educate all of our students and connect them on a much larger scale. So uh, food for thought as we close out our Thursday teacher talk. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We hope that you have an incredible day an even better Friday, an amazing sunshine filled weekend. And we will see you right back here next Thursday for another edition of Teacher Talk.